Hello everyone, this is Thomas from the Isle of Thomas again. That was a chair, it wasn't me, I swear. Um, you might notice I'm wearing sort of the same clothes. This is my, my pyjama. It's till the morning here. I haven't gone out basking yet. I'm gonna do it after this video. I'm standing a little bit later this uh, past few weeks because I've noticed that in the mornings I did, was not making as much money and uh, yeah, I'll take now I'm taking my time in the morning to do all my touring things and make all my uh, social medias and posts and such so that I can go and they can be online for that the, the whole time I'm basking and when I back, come back at night I usually just um, have dinner with, with Belle, my girlfriend and I after lunch uh, we watch we we'll watch a movie or a show or something and then she goes to bed and then I come back into the studio and answer all the messages and make my other posts and stuff so that's kind of like my system right now which it works um, it does mean that I go to bed quite late and I wake up quite early but I'm used to it by now that's okay also I've been listening to your comments and I got I got this oh no I didn't plug it in oh no I had to be ready for this stuff I can't no okay so I got a light because some of you said that the lighting was not the best and I agree it didn't look as nice as it should but I got this one oh, whoa it's too bright but you can adjust oh, that's better and you can actually change the color I believe that's like a reddish light and that's a yellow oh blue is nice okay I'm gonna keep the blue and I also heard about my voice not being very easy to hear. I'm gonna try to modulate more and speak more properly. I also got a microphone for the phone, which is um, it was not it was not too expensive. It wasn't cheap. Um, it was I think a bit more than a hundred dollars. And it's a good brand. It's the same brand I use for my singing microphone. It's a Shure. So I'm trying it out. I think it's good. I hope it's gonna be good. I, I think I think it might. So you tell me in the comments after if it's this if this is better or not, and I'll take it from there. So okay, down to business. Yesterday I was feeling terrible. My throat was killing me. I was getting like cold chills. You know, my all my friends were saying like, ah, oh, you got COVID, you got COVID. But I'm like, uh, doesn't it's not too bad. It's like. It's like a normal cold and I always get them every year at this exact same time of the year where the season is changing, where we got into winter now. So suddenly it started getting a lot cooler and when the season changes I always get sick, always. And every year I used to get really sick, like for a whole week, most of the, of the times. This time was not too bad, like today I'm feeling great. My voice still sounds a bit, um, not like it used to, not like it's normal, it's still a bit, uh, so, but anyway, I missed yesterday's day of basking because I, did, I didn't go, it was, it was gonna be terrible if I did. So today I have to go, so we'll see how it goes. Um, it's not gonna sound, my voice is not gonna sound as good as it normally does, but you know, it is what it is, we'll get as much done as we can, but at least we'll get something out of it. Um, so I stay home, I worked on some of my drawings. I had some people from Torum sending me some personalized uh, drawing commissions for NFTs. That was actually quite good. Let me see if I can find it. See, this is an another, another thing. I should have all this stuff ready. I shouldn't be searching for it in the middle of my video, you know. That's something I need to be better at. I need to prepare these kind of things. But it's all part of the learning experience. It's all part of the um, process, I believe. And I can... It's something I should need to learn from this. Okay, NFTs. Okay, so someone asked me to do an NFT for the um, soccer competition. UEFA Euro 2020. Oh no, the light rings, the thing, well, anyway, you can see it, and 
That was a great thing. I, I, as an Argentinian, I love soccer. I used to be such a huge fan of soccer that I used to watch every single match. Um, I got to the point where my friends would come over to watch the matches with me and they would always say like, man, you know more about this than the people that are getting paid to, like the sports journal, journal, journalists, journalists. So they were actually telling me, you should be a sport journalist. And for a, for a time, I considered it. But it was not meant to be. Um, I think for the better, probably. Yeah, probably. Also, um, like now, since I came to Australia, I have completely lost touch with the world of soccer and football. So I'm not sure what's going on. And um, yeah. I sort of lost lost the passion for it I guess. I would still love to play if I get the, if I get the, the, the chance I haven't played in ages. Uh, I was I was never a very skillful player in the game, but I've always been sort of a smart player, you know, like because I I used to love watching soccer so much. What I used to do is I used to always be watching the players that didn't have the ball. Right, everybody was watching at the guy with the with the ball dribbling, and I will always be watching the other players, what the other players were doing, like where were they putting themselves on the field, and why. And from doing that, I learned that. You know, well, let's go into a soccer tangent for a second, and I'll share with you my soccer philosophy. Okay, this is what most people get wrong, and that's why. In every team that I've been into. I was never the most skilled, I was never the fastest, never the strongest. Uh, I, I had asthma when I, when I was uh, a kid. So I always, uh, I got tired really quickly in every match. So when, when we played in big fields, I, I wouldn't be able to do anything because I would start running and I would run out of breath really quickly. But we used, in Argentina, we used to play in small fields, like five versus five. And in that one, I could do better because, yeah, you, you need to run less. Um, anyway, what I noticed in soccer and why I could make more of an impact in each game than players that were so much more skilled than me, it's some simple things, some sim very simple things that most people don't think about, unfortunately. And I think it, you can also apply them to different aspects of your life. Number one, in a soccer match, 98% of the game, you will not have the ball. Right, You have the ball in little moments in the game. Most of the game you will not have the ball in your possession. Maybe your teammate will, but not you personally. So what I noticed very quickly is that what you do when you don't have the ball is way more important than what you do when you have it. It's 98% of the game is not having the ball. So I always put a lot of um, focus on when the ball was over there and I was on the other side of the, of the field, where should I position myself? What should I be doing? And that allowed me a lot of times to like appear suddenly out of nowhere, free and score a goal very easily. And people will be like, well, what happened? Like who, who was supposed to be on him? You know, cause I will, and I will always be like moving around, moving, trying to find a spot and a lot of, a lot of times I will not find a spot myself but by moving around the defenders will move to to block me and that will create space for someone else to come over and score so I would do a lot of that with which uh, people don't notice and if you watch the match you will not think oh that guy is uh, doing all this stuff behind the scenes because uh, you're always looking at the one with the ball. So maybe he will score the goal and you will say, oh, he's he's amazing, he scored. But you don't notice that he scored because someone else created the space for him to go in. So that's a lot of, a lot of uh, what I used to do. And you don't need to be very skilled for, for that. You just need to pay attention and just look and see where is the best place to go. Also... The other thing that I notice is that when you have the ball, most of the times, 
the easiest and simple action is the best. Right? You get the ball, you see someone free, you pass it to him, and you move to a new location to receive the ball free. If you do that, most of the time, that's the right answer. Whereas a lot of people that are skilled, they get the ball and they think, oh, I can dribble past him and I, then I can cross the ball over to the other side and they have these complicated ideas in their mind and then when they try to execute, it doesn't work. Because maybe you can, you can dribble through one player but a lot of times if you dribble past someone, you end up in a very awkward position and then a second player can very easily take the ball off you or maybe you dribble through him and then you are in a very awkward position it's hard to make the pass so you pass the ball wrongly, you know, and that mats the play. So what I used to do is I used to grab the ball, I used to look at who's open, I would pass it and then I would run to a new a new a new position that's pretty much all I did and I would try to make myself open and when I was um, closer to, to the goal I would try to score but I would always be looking at the field and who is in a better position than me a lot of times people want to score they want to be the one that scores the goal right and sometimes they shoot in a not in a good position and they, there was someone else that was better and they don't pass the ball because they want to be the ones who scores. And that was never the way I looked at things. I always I always looked at what's best for the team. You know, if, if he has a better chance to score, it's much better for me to pass the ball to him than to try to score it myself. It's much better. And yeah, that's that's the way I approach the game. Also, another thing interesting for my <laughs> soccer career, if you call it like that, which, of course, it's, it's nonsense to say because I only play in... Uh, the teams that we made with uh, with my friends is that I love to play as a striker, but I always recognize that there were better players to play in that position. So in most of the teams, like I would try to start as a striker, but ninety percent of the times there was someone else that was better, so I would let them play and I would play in a different position, and I would always try to see who was better in that position and I will always try to put myself where it was better for the team. Not where I wanted to play, but what it was better for the team. And because I was not very skilled, um, I yeah I keep switching positions until most of the times I end up playing as a goalkeeper because, well, first of all, this this there's very few people that like playing as goalkeepers. Um, it's not the most fun position, so that's why people don't, don't like it. So I would always, most of the times I would end up playing there just because nobody else wanted to and because the team needed someone to, to be a goalkeeper. So for my last, the last years I was always playing as a goalkeeper and yeah, it's, it's funny when you start playing in a position that nobody else wants to play and you start at the beginning, of course, you're terrible. Then after a few matches, you start getting good at, at it. And by the end, on my last year, when I was in Argentina, I was playing in three different teams because they all wanted me to play as a goalkeeper, which was fun, a funny thing. And, and a lot of times they would have to fight between them because the times of the matches will, will not allow me to play for all the teams in the same weekend. There was always weekend leagues that we used to play. And yeah, that's just a funny anecdote. It's also something that I apply to music. In all the bands that I've been in a part of, which were only two, and they didn't last very long, so it's not like I have a ton of experience. But I also apply the same, the same notion of, okay, where does the band need me to be? And not, what do I want to be in the band, you know? So, like, I sing, and I play guitar and piano, but in the in the first band that I was a part of, um, there were better people to play guitar and piano. So I was playing drums. I'm not a drummer, but I could keep the beat, sort of, somewhat. And then another guy joined in, and he was an amazing drummer. So I was like, yeah, you, you go ahead, you play, you play drums, and I started playing bass. You know, yeah. I've always had that mentality that where the band where the band needs me to be, where the team needs me to be, I'll be, and then I'll try to get better at it, and I'll try to be the best that thing that I need to be and if someone else joins in and he's better than me and that 
I'll just grab a different instrument. I'll just do something different. You know, whatever is better for the team. That was always my my thought in everything. Um, and yeah. Oh boy, I've been talking about it for 15 minutes. Um, there was still something else I wanted to show you. It's getting a bit late now, but a big news in my life is that I became an uncle. My sister got a baby and I made a little drawing to commemorate this event. That's my oh no, that's my sister with her husband. Uh, Bienvenida Azul means welcome Azul, which is her, the name of the baby. And it means blue. Literally, it means the color blue. And I'm, I'm just so happy. This is such a new experience for me and I am extremely happy. I also made a drawing of my my mom with the baby for the first time. Uh, so it's the first baby of uh, the, 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 the family. So I'm a first time uncle, my mom is a first time grandmother, which is amazing. Unfortunately, my family is still in Argentina and I'm stuck here in Australia, so I don't know when I'll be able to go and meet my new niece. But I am counting the days. And I'm trying to start putting some money away, so as soon as the borders open, as soon as the whole pandemic gets cleared out, I can go. Because, yeah, it's been, it's been a long time since I've been back. My other sister got married since I've been here, stuck. The youngest one just had the the baby. So I, I need to go back. I need to go and see everyone. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I need to. Definitely. Anyway. This video has gone for too long. I'll see you in the next vlog to tell you how my journey is going. Hopefully, well, I'll definitely go to Basque today because I didn't need it yesterday. So hopefully that will go good. I'm going to go to a place called Granville, which is usually good. And I'm going to try my new guitar setup over there, which they haven't seen it yet. So that's going to be fun. And yeah, I'll tell you how it goes. I'll probably either tonight or tomorrow morning I'll make the next video. Anyway, have a good day. Enjoy, have fun. All of that. See you in the next one.